Hello and welcome to the MMA Wales podcast. Uh, today we're joined by uh, Stu Tyree from um, CRA Pembroke. The CRA Pembroke? Pembrokeshire. Uh, West Wales. West Wales. C- CRA West Wales. CRA West Wales. Um, he wants to stamp his authority on West Wales, not Pembroke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There is no other CRA in West Wales now. There's <laughs> <laughs> not much about anything down here. He's done well. Um, yeah. And uh, Jamie Morris as well, who uh, runs the Adrenaline Fight Night uh, events. Uh, and obviously one of them coming down to Tembe, which we'll get on to in a bit. So thanks for watching, guys. So, Stu, a uh, long time we make in this, isn't it? Uh, we've been wanting to come down for a while. It's been a while, yeah. 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 So, um, Obviously, great to have you on today. Um, you've got a Thank wealth you. of knowledge, uh, and you've done amazing uh, moving this uh, sort of section of CRA down down this way. You've got loads of good fights. It's just awesome to see uh, BGA and the mate coming down this end of the world as well. Yeah. Um, so uh, I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, it's, it's a good time as well because like we got people messaging us now asking about the win. Oh, MMA the in Pembroke and BGA in Pembroke. In MMA in Wales and it comes up with MMA Wales. <laughs> yeah. uh, so they're like, oh, why can little Jimmy come and train? And I'm just like, <laughs> Stewie, Stewie's the guy. Big Stewie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just Stewie. It's like a tear, you know, obviously, just go down the stairs. Little do we know. Um, but no, it is, it is a good club and you do have kids here in all ages, don't you? Yep. Um, we recently started the kids classes for four and above yeah so um, they're going great awesome so, yeah they can quite take the dive the three year olds like Chris not yet um, I want to do it's a big dive get the ball rolling and then yeah. we'll build up to that yeah my patience might not be quite that good yet right. <laughs> I've got to train that it's yeah. the side of training I need to work I was talking to Ross on the way to Ross Barrington yeah and saying that my boy is free like later this year so I'm just going to Throw my turd in the uh, CRA punch bowl like that. <laughs> the Chris. <laughs> Have that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so some people like obviously uh, my well, most people know you. It's quite popular down this end. Um, but you've got a big experience in like um, kickboxing uh, from back in the day, which James no more. Yeah. Than I, I was saying I remember when um, you fought Gareth Davis, didn't you? Um, yeah, I can't remember his last name. I know his first yeah, name. Yeah, well, I forgot. He hit me quite hard. Yeah, so he I did hit me quite yeah. hard. He, he, he does I that. I remember his last name. Um, back then, he was quite active, and I thought John Hope the same night, was obviously yes. one of the his teammates. Now, I didn't know it, we didn't know each other then. So, uh, for me, I, I, I know Stu was doing MMA then as well. I just don't know where, <laughs> I don't know which come first. Yeah. So, that was um, my question. Is like, because obviously Graham Brockway was there. Yeah, I was. Um, I was training with Graham Brockway um, at a kickboxing um, gym, yeah. and we we had an, um, a desire to fight MMA, yeah. but we weren't in the fighting world. We were just doing traditional jujitsu in a local community centre, mm. and um, and kickboxing was great. Was he it? took us, yeah. We did our stand up oh. with him, and um, who's good? Yeah. He's got he's a good yeah, kickboxer, yeah, good boxer. Um, great level, and the guys there all top level, um, and then we. We managed to get our first fights, um, yeah. and then we did have, I guess, that one uh, kickboxing I had um, before I moved up to Chris. Then, um, mm. so because they, they were quite active at the time, um, yeah, Brockway. at semi-pro level, I was active yeah. with Graham, and then um, I got knocked out by uh, Bobby Rich, who was at right. the time a purple belt in BJJ, and I didn't know what BJJ was. No. And he put his head down. He threw four sh- uh, punches, and I was just worried about the takedown. And he yeah. let me clean out. So, <laughs> um, so that was the moment where I said, "Right, I need to learn the BJJ, BJJ um, to not worry about it." Was. Traditional jujitsu, like it was, um, it was just getting me active. Uh, but I knew I needed something more. Yeah. Um, and so I looked for people, and Chris Reese was the name I found. Mm. Um, it's a good name to find. Yeah. Most, most people did. <laughs> and, find uh, him. Yeah, yeah, I give him a ring and he said, come up. I remember turning up and Rob Rob Taylor was taking the session and I, I walked in thinking I was the bee's knees because <laughs> I'd been tapping my traditional uh, instructor mm-hmm. regularly. And then uh, after that session, I was hooked because I got absolutely levered by... Rob uh, doesn't take many... 70 uh, kilos, soaking wet, bearded, yeah. uh, monkey. Tattooed <laughs> yeah. So um, after... 
after that, <laughs> I, knew, <laughs> I knew that was it. Um, he triangled me something like five times in five minutes, and each time it got tighter. And I thought triangle was my thing. And, uh, oh, I thought that too. <laughs> I made that mistake. And, uh, then I realised he's strong, and he's drop. Well, it's, you know, like you know, he um, he just had that knowledge over yeah. me. I, I thought. I'm a, I'm a rugby player. Yeah, Just strong. finished rugby and long finished. Strong. Yeah, it's going to be easy. Uh, what, a, what a way to learn. <laughs> but it, it hooked me. So, and then since then, you know, mm. I haven't stopped. So, um, it was the lesson I needed. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's nothing like having a 70 kilo guy beat yeah. someone who's in mid 90s with pure technique when they're pure grunt. Um, and it taught me a lesson, which, you know, Thankfully, I'm bearing the uh, yeah. the benefits of it now. So yeah. it's crazy as well. Like, so far down the line, and obviously Rob has his own club in Cardiff, and you yeah. have your own club in West Wales. Yeah. And <laughs> you both show you. Well, that's the that's a lesson to the fighters of these days because they're spoilt. I mean, I I travelled the train like my kickboxing coach. Don't get me wrong; he was not far from home. We got some set on the table. Hang on a minute. How, long, how comes you all out to have hands and I'm not? I don't bang the table. I'm not banging the table. Right. Have hands himself. Just, These guys are going to kill you if you keep banging the table. That's, that's fine. I can deal with it. Um, yeah, but as I say, my course trained me twice a week, quite close to home, but I had to travel and was mm. barring and I used to go to Cardiff all the time. And, now, they're spoiled, as you say, we've still got his academy down here. Yeah. You know, they're like, what do you mean travel? You know, oh, yeah. It's time, you know? Well, when I say to them now, like, you need to get up to HQ, you need to get, um, it's a different type of training, completely. Different like, bodies. We train, we train hard here, but there's, there's something different. Do you know what I mean? I go up there, and it's a different intensity altogether. And they just, well, why do I want to go there? Yeah. And it's like, like uh, you'll know. Yeah. Just go have the experience yeah. and then you'll realise. Um, I mean, I used to tra- travel up there three times a week, train all day. Like, f- I'd be there from 10 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night, yeah. travel home, and then I'd be up there two days later, and then I'd be up there the day after. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they just, I don't know, like you say, they're spoiled. Yeah. Um, and to me, the, the, um, the fact that it's willing to do that, you can tell is has got something different because oh, yeah, everyone I've ever trained with who's done well has always travelled for training. Like, yeah. You know, even to the point where, as you say, you know, if there was no training, if there was no structure you were going up to in Swansea, yeah, you're still going to different sparring partners, yeah, which yeah. again is essential because you get used to the people you yeah, train with, yeah, blah blah blah. Yeah. So you've got to go to these places. It's like with any martial art, you know, you've got to travel. Yeah. We used to go to Cheltenham every day, my guy does, to, to, to spar. I mean, we've we been in London training, there's all sorts, you, you just got to do it. There's so much healthy competition around now as well, so it's not just CRA, there's other clubs which are out there as well now, and obviously it's good to have the competition yeah. here. Yeah. It's because almost like... People, you, if you can't fight against anyone, what are you training for? You, know? yeah. Yeah. you go to a comp and you're looking across the mat and there's Pedro Bess, a guy, and you're like, come on, let's have a piece of it, and that's healthy. Yeah, because yeah. Because if there wasn't yeah, two right, clubs, right. there would be no... Yeah, so the bigger it gets, the better for everyone. And I think you know it's it's a size thing as well. You've got to go with it. With us bigger lads, you've got to go with the people. Too. Like yeah. you know, if we use Chris Reese's gym as an example, there's a lot of guys floating on the band and waiting for every week. Yeah, I think so. It's perfect for each other. In a way, people have got to go to them. You know, yeah. but us bigger guys, if you know, if it's three or four of us, and two or three are injured or out for a yeah. minute, I mean, you know, you. you you knock it, yeah. so then this is where you can't rely on anything. You can't like, you can't rely on training partners because you don't know what's going to happen in your life. Yeah. So then yeah. you you go in somewhere else, and if you're not willing to do that and sacrifice a little bit, you're kind of out of the game, you know. Yeah. So. So um, you obviously compete yourself today with BGJ. Yeah. 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 Well, I um, I try to um, obviously injury permitting. Yeah. Um, try to keep active. It was a bit of a frustrating year last year. I was injured for twelve months, but back now this year mm. hoping to hit it hard you know so yeah. um, I think it, although I find the coaching helps me to develop my game as well I think competition is a very good way of testing yourself and then developing from there you know yeah. well so, definitely you fought some top guys as well really. I, yeah I, I, I mean some of the people I've fought uh, you know yeah. they've been around yeah, well, you know I mean? Jamie Hughes just goes black belt and you're yeah. with him yeah. and uh, he's top level. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. So. Yeah, he said that, like, you know, he's he is 
a competitor to be yeah. like yeah. I wouldn't even say hobbyist in the same sentence no. you know? <laughs> flat out <laughs> flat you know it's the same. Kick- always doing ways. great you know to be fair to still yeah. even the guy you fought in kickboxing was three times world champion didn't he yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was my first ever kickboxing fight so. it's, it's uh, one thing we don't want to say it does it, 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 it was Tresco you fought Petrescu, yeah, yeah I mean, fought him uh, a few years ago. Oh, uh, the one that, that was a good, good scrap. To be fair, yeah. um, in my opinion, I lost it on me going for free takedowns and missing two of them. Yeah. Um, it was a war. It was a free round. Petrescu was a very minutes. good striker. Yeah, yeah. and um, you know, I just dull or not, I stood there and you know, he, he did yeah. give me a good, uh, a good scrap. Yeah. He won on points. It was a bit disappointing, but that's my own doing. You know what I mean? I, I missed the takedowns, um, and it was a cracking, cracking uh, show on the night. You know, so. that's the thing, though. See, it's like that's the difference between a fighter taking the fights, yeah. And these are days, you know, a lot of people are shying away from the tough ones, and they, you know what I mean? Uh, the pad records, if you like, which you know, it's, it's the way it is. <laughs> yeah, that that's always going to happen, isn't it? You know, yeah. So. Um, I, I think it's up to the shows um, now yeah. to sort of take the mantle and really yeah. sort of <laughs> try and get rid of them. And um, well, we we're doing a pretty good job of it. I mean, yeah, that's the thing you get job. some shows who are doing that, yeah, and other shows who are like, you know, how many tickets are going to sell? You're pretty much going to win it, <laughs> which is unfortunate. And I think people are starting to see that from one event to another, yeah. but they don't know. Yeah, all the time, yeah. you know. So yeah, but it is what it is. People should just take fights. You know, if it's yeah. a fair fight on paper, it should just happen. There shouldn't be no. Oh, I need to get two wins, three wins. No, no, no. You earn them. Yeah. <laughs> so um, at the moment, you're um, training. You're back training every day. Yeah, uh, pretty flat out um, training. You know, all aspects, obviously. Yeah. But um, you know, we've got a number of guys on the yeah. training show in Tenby. Yeah. Um, and as the team, next goal is that we are flat out, you know. So yeah, yeah. So back on that bandwagon. Um, obviously, last year being injured, had a bit of time off it. But um, the year before, I had a couple of like an MMA and K K one fight, yeah. and they were learning curves for me. I tried to fight my old style, even though I was working on new uh, new styles of fighting. Um, and you know it really taught me a lesson that you've got to stick to what your game plans are yeah. uh, rather than getting into that like, uh, like you say I'm mad for a scrap yeah. um, but you know my style I'm better at isn't so much getting punched in the face and then yeah. trying to punch yeah. them in the face so I just gotta you know gotta work that the mental side of it is the issue I, I've had Maybe. but I think I've learned a lot from the last 18 months yeah I think because you had a bit of time off before them two fights as well didn't you yeah um, I think I can't even remember what was going on then yeah. I think it was injuries again yeah. but as um, I say I think them on the competition scene with the BJJ mm. so. I think them fights were about to get you rolling and then you have another year off which is unfortunate yeah, yeah so. definitely like I wanted a big active year last year but I tore a ligament in my pelvis um, and I've well I had five months no training at all then it took me two months of just cardio just to get back into it and then every time I'd roll I'd have six weeks and I'd get sciatica or something and getting up in the morning was a real yeah. real deal like you know it was a real problem to even just stand in the kitchen making the kids breakfast yeah. but uh, touch wood we're, we're at a point now where I'm okay. flat out, yeah, I'm training harder than I've ever trained, yeah. um, and it's going good. Yeah, well, you didn't waste your time, really, because obviously you, instead of just, like, you know, a lot of people might have sat in their ass or something, but you opened the club. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, on that knowledge, yeah, you, stay calm, you know, change, change the, the luck of the club. Yeah. Um, we were BJJ Pembrokeshire, uh, we sort of, I took over at um, CRA Camarvin, yeah. um, and here, so then we obviously together with CRA West Wales. Um, and yeah, and then done this place out just to invite more people to try and get the uh, BJJ out there. That is not just for the spit and sawdust stuff. And like we we were spit and sawdust. You walk yeah. in and it was you either liked it or you didn't. <laughs> you looking at the dark stairwell. Yeah. You know, I I've had people tell me we looked up the stairs and we went 
And then, <laughs> you know, people making noise upstairs. So they moved everything around, and now we've got a nice entrance. We've got a, you know, all singing, all dancing, mad area. And uh, we've got the people coming to the sprung kitchen. floor. Yeah, sprung oh, nice. floor, so it's nice and soft. The robot that cleans the mats as well. And a ro- yeah, <laughs> the robot that. Uh, is it going to be a bar, is it him? Um, <laughs> to be honest, there's a couple of names flying around. <laughs> Dusty, I think, is about, uh, about as good as we've got at the moment. So, so diplomatic one on camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll save our conversation again. <laughs> yeah. So, um, have you got, you've got your guys on the upcoming Adrenaline show? Yeah, we've got a few guys on there. Um, you know, try to get a few locals on the, the Tembi show. Yeah. Um, you know, it's been a long time coming. Yeah. Uh, a show yeah. in Pembrokeshire. Uh, mainly on the fact that we didn't know there was a venue just around the corner. Right. And, uh, you know, we find, yeah. out, find out that the venue is perfect. Go and have a look at it, and it, it's spot on, yeah. you know. So, and it's been there for years. Yeah. That's the way yeah, I have actually seen the venue yet, but we are we'll going there this afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to seeing whatever it happened. There was gonna, it was gonna, it was coming near that date, yeah. <laughs> but I said. <laughs> Still, I'll look at this venue, I'll look at this venue, and then yeah. he's like, oh, the ledger centre in town, we actually, I'm going to pop in. And, and, and they, then they, the phone call was, afterwards. Yeah. It was literally, I had a phone call the week before, right. saying, ah, look, we're looking to do some live combat sport events. Yeah. Are you interested? And I used to work for the ledger centre. Um, the guy that runs the ledger centre is one of my old bosses. Right. So, uh, phoned him back, and it's like, ah, oh, this is interesting. And then literally the day after, he rings me, right? We want to go to Tembi. And I was like, yes. oh my God, what's the chances? <laughs> so um, so I, I said, I, I said, look, you know, I, I'll go and have a look at this venue. Um, and then got in touch with him, said, look, yeah. mate, it's spot on. Yeah. Um, obviously, he had to come and put his professional eye around. And, uh, yeah. you know, it, it is. It's going to be all singing, all dancing. Yeah. It's a great the venue. potential for it is huge. Yeah. So, yeah. I think a lot of people as well down this end, um, for them to watch MMA, they have to travel. They have to go down to the Swansea and but, stuff. Yeah. But an yeah. effect on their doorstep. One of the reasons I've always said I wanted to come down here is because of the support they bring to Swansea. Yeah. I mean, when Stu fights, it's, it's, it's like a pen box a day out. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone wants to come yeah, in. I mean, yeah. we, get, we get a lot of people up there on the shows we're on. Mm. Um we had Chris did one in Carmarthen uh, mm. years and years ago, yeah. and um, you know that was uh, jam packed, like you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but mm. one on the doorstep. Plus, they can go out and they can have their jolly afterwards in Tembi, yeah. and yeah. everyone looks yeah. a night out in Tembi. Yeah. Um, Bit cut with the caravan situation. Yeah, off season too early because it's off season. Oh, the caravan. Cut the none of the caravan sites somewhere, but yeah. most of them will be off yeah. season. So I'm, uh, I'm in this this uh, really dodgy hotel on the Friday before. So mm. Yeah, we're all staying there. We're all mentioned separate. Oh yeah, <laughs> 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 you're devastated being there. Hard work being in your job. So. Yeah. 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 But no, I am. Um, it's not like I can even say to him, like, mate, it's a bit long to travel. I need a hotel room. It's just from the corner. It's 20 minutes away. So, is, it, oh, is, that, is that how far it is from here, 20 minutes? Uh, yeah, um, pretty much, depending on traffic. Yeah. And uh, the time you're driving around in Pembroke, it depends on what time you're going to be driving. Yeah, you know I mean? right, same um, as anyway, I suppose. Right now in Pembrokeshire, it's all bloody tractors. Bloody roads and tractors. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so, Tractors, Slightly lorries. different rush hour. We've got the ferry just around the corner, so you've got oh, lorries oh, coming there every oh, uh, every day, twice a day. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, it's. I mean, I say twenty minutes away. It depends. Yeah. Depends. So yeah, but uh, it's no, a stone's throw. I think, I think it's going to be cracking. I think it's yeah. going to be cracking event. I think a lot of people are going to turn out for it to who might not have even been to an MMA yeah, before. Without a doubt, the tickets we've sold so far, you know, um, when like it, we've got our usual guys who come up to Swansea, yeah. but. but um, then you've got the guys who just can't, maybe can only get a babysitter until nine in the morning, or yeah. they they can keep get a babysitter till eleven at night. Yeah. They're coming to have a look. Yeah. Uh, Some people just don't like to travel either. Simple yeah. as that. Yeah, yeah. So, what, what I like, what I, the most, like, what I'm thing I keep on telling people when I'm telling them about coming to Pembroke is like Pembroke is. I've done shows in Swansea for eight years <laughs> this year. Um, like four or five a year sometimes <laughs> and no the evening post has never rung me and I mean I won a world title on adrenaline and the evening post didn't ring me right since we put it on Facebook that we're going to tell me 
either four or five different pa- magazines or papers from Pembrokes have, have rung me on my mobile. I'm like, hang on a minute. You're ringing me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really it's refreshing. I, mean. well, I, I think we, we booked the hall and within two weeks, I'm sat um, in a place I work and open up the paper and there's a snippet. So I took a picture, <laughs> sent it to uh, Wally. Yeah, mate, we've arrived. <laughs> so, it's great, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's, you know, the, the actual yeah, interest, yeah. you know. And they're like, oh, please give us a ring when you know anything more. And I'm yeah. like, okay, I've lost the memory already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I just put it online. And they see it because... Is, um, if I put it on the adrenaline page, the, the newspapers are on yeah. it. I mean, it's yeah, great. So. Mm. It's, I mean, it's the first yeah. first ever MMA show in Pembrokeshire. Um, I think there has been attempts in the past, um, but um, I think they've been by clubs who are used to kickboxing shows, used right. to boxing shows, and they haven't had the experience of what he's got. Right. Um, where you know he's probably messed up a million times yeah. just to get to the point now where he's he's working yeah. fluid. You know yeah. what I mean? So to be honest, as well, I went to a kickboxing show five years ago in Pembroke, actually. Yeah, and I I was told that day it was the first one in twenty years. Yeah, so possibly, yeah. in twenty five years, there's been one kickboxing show. Yeah. Plenty of boxing down here, isn't there? I think the amateur the boxing shows over in Halford West, but this side of the county. Um, I think that was the first one in mm. 20 odd years mm. um, and in fact I probably was up the last one watching my uncle fight um, so you must have been only 15 then I, I, no, I, was, I, I would have been like oh, maybe not even the last one but um, I remember going with my granddad many yeah. many years ago yeah. um, to watch him and you know it, it used to be a big thing kickboxing did in this yeah. country there was yeah. a lot of guys who were champions yeah. um, but as with anything else it, it sloped off a bit yeah, um, but now obviously MMA's. I know the, box, the boxing is a big boxing following down here. A lot of ABA fighters down here. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of talented fighters down here. Mm-hmm. Um, but generally, same as I have to with BJJ, they have to travel, travel to train. to um, to get that sort of full time aspect of training. Yeah. Um, there's some great coaches. What's the heavyweight's name now? They used to fight a couple of years ago. Scott. Yeah. Scott. Scott Gamma. Gamma. Yeah. He used to drive to my gym to train. In, in Britain Valley, my old kids, because yeah. it was Paul Boyce was his promoter who owned yeah. the building. So they used to come there yeah. and they used to spa Enzo yeah. and a, a Polish boy used to come over as well to spa my heavyweight. Yeah. So they used to be like, oh, James, we're using the gym on Sunday. Like for who? Or Scott, Scott Gammer Enzo and that Polish heavyweight was ranked number seven in Europe. I'm like, Great, yeah. <laughs> I'll see you there. Yeah. <laughs> we watched it. And then, then I was suspecting. Oh, well, Enzo broke both his hands with a hangover once. <laughs> he had a fight, and he got playing. He broke both his eyes. Like, right. oh, his yeah. thumb was sorry. He was great. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they were looking like, lumps on each other. I was like, this is better than buying a ticket for a show. Because yeah. <laughs> he could bang as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's worth your nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Um, Obviously, are there any standout guys you've got coming up on the rest of them? Um, to be fair, I think um, uh, Jamie Goff's been uh, doing well with the amateur levels. He's um, he's still got his O yeah. on the defeats cal- uh, column. Three and O, three and O, yeah. Um, and you know he's he's hard hard work and he's had his fluctuations where he's in and out of the gym with um, with family, women, with, um, fa- family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to be diplomatic. I'm not. Uh, but, uh, you know, for this one, I don't think I've seen him train this hard. Um, yeah. And he's feeling good as well. Uh, so Good fight, that's going to be. Yeah, it's going to be a cracking fight. Um, Who's he fighting? Okay, so remember the guy Di Evans fought on my last show? Yeah. Him. Cool. And so, it's yeah. his first fight at welterweight, and he's been doing a lot more grappling since. And um, I think Jamie's style, I think it makes a nice, yeah. nice entertainment fight. It's going to be fight. a cracking, cracking scrap. So, um but yeah, um, Paul Paul Rogers. I mean, he always comes to excite. Uh, yeah. He's a very exciting fighter. Um, again, with family commitments, he's been in and out um, over the you know the years. But he's flat out at the moment um, and looking sharp. Um, and like I said, he's always exciting to watch. So yeah. that one that one will be a very good fight mm. to watch. Um, Who's he fighting? He's fighting Brad. Brad, regular on the show, Brad. Yeah. As I say, both uh, Brad Evans, 
both put up the best in jiu jitsu, huh? both quick guys, like the throw punches and kicks. Great yeah, fun. It's gonna be that would be a cracking fight to watch yeah. that one. Um obviously uh with my bias I I think Paul uh, Paul's got the skills to mm. rain, but he is looking very sharp, he's looking mm. very he's looking ready. Um and, and it's a night. It's, out, it's, so it's the first time a bantamweight as well, isn't it? It's where he's always yeah. been cutting a flyweight before. He hates cutting. Yeah. He can't stand cutting. Um, he's the grumpiest cutter I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> uh, yeah, I could have said that about him as well. But no, he, he, he gets really grumpy yeah. when he cuts. So, um, so yeah, it's got to be good to see him feeling fresh as well, you know? So, yeah, um, so yeah I mean, we've got a, a number of uh, first timers as well. They're training hard. They've got a good camp. Uh, they travel up to HQ as well yeah. uh, to get the extras in. So, you know, I think the mm. card's going to be mm. electric, to be fair, the whole card. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, they, we've got, uh, I think, you know, a young Toby. He's, yeah. he's a strong, strong guy. You know, he, he's very inexperienced, but... He's an absolute monster. Sometimes he I make the fight, so you know. Yeah, it's he likes uh, the rawness. sheep and cows around for yeah. a living. Yeah. Um, and he's game, he's, he's training hard, he's learning every single session. Um, so, you know, he's going to be he's gonna be one to watch for the future, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, Your brother as well? My brother, yeah, Sean, uh, Sean Mianney, he's, I mean, we call him concrete mitts yeah. uh, in the gym. He's just, his hands are electric. The thing is, like, Sean is... is he, he, he has a really good fight or not, doesn't he? Well, with Sean, he's in the past. I've struggled to get him in the gym. He's um, you know, he's got a lot of other commitments. But for this fight, he's he's bitten at it. He's really training, um, and to, that's the great thing. I don't know whether it's a change to the gym or what, but is there's um, a flat out commitment of the whole team. Where it's got to be like refreshing, though. I mean. I, I remember we used to fight at home and fight away and the, the, the attitude in the gym would be completely different. Yeah. Well, this is the first time realistically yeah. they fight at home. So everyone is chomping at the you bit. Know. Everyone's supporting each other. Everyone's pushing each other. You know, if someone doesn't turn up to train and you get the old panda bus out and you... Yeah. What's wrong? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Smart princess. Yeah, what's wrong, princess? <laughs> Take that thumb off your head. Yeah. Come on. You know, <laughs> just... A, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah, but the whole team, to be fair, a, a flat-out training... Um, sparring's going well getting up to HQ and doing some sparring as well yeah. so yeah it's it's going to be yeah. good buzzing, it's probably buzzing atmosphere because the event mm. yeah um, without a doubt it's just yeah. event what surprised me the most about putting yeah. a show on down here is the people in Swansea talking about it yeah oh, they're like oh, I can't wait to go yeah. to Tembe yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what yeah. doing a show with month after in Swansea yeah, talk about that guys yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of people excited about it yeah, yeah. I think um, really I think it could be a, a good ongoing thing yeah and um, definitely next time we do it in caravan season yeah <laughs> when the sun's out right so uh, uh, we're going to wrap up part one there looking there for the camera right <laughs> We're still around part one, um, and then when we come back after break, uh, we'll be talking there about uh, UFC Cage Warriors and a few other little bits. Welcome back to part two. Um, just like full break, joined by Stu Tyree um, and James Wallace, the best partner. The best partner. So, um, right, moving on then, uh, let's talk about some uh, upcoming events. Um, so we've obviously mentioned a little bit about uh, Adrian Tembe, uh, but we've had some news last week about UFC. Uh, so obviously um, John Phillips has been announced now for UFC London. Awesome. Uh, you've obviously done a bit of training with him and things like that. Yeah. Um, uh, never a pleasure. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, I learned a lot from from training with John, mainly because I was petrified of yeah. what was coming. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I tell you, I never stepped in the cage worried after sparring him. Um, I used to step in there and think, well, can't get worse than that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, he's, uh, it's great to see him on that show. Um, mm. yeah, long time coming. But, you know, every now and then, give him a message, oh, when's it coming, John? And, you know, he's frustrated there. Um, so, I it's mean, great to see him on it. Um, so, it's going to be exciting to see what he does yeah, as well. Is, yeah. So many pro fights. Like John, like 21 and 6 on Shared Dog, you know. Um, 
you, you ask, you see people are now who had four fights, yeah. you know, yeah, and it's yeah. like the girls sometimes coming in three wins and five losses and stuff Definitely. because they're making the numbers up and you've got to say, hang on, is this fair? Yeah. But this is the third effort uh, of getting in the UFC because obviously they had two American visa problems and they got him a nice fight. They got Charles Bird. Uh, it's going to turn that forward a bit because of the microphone. Kid, yeah. kid Dynamite. His name. <laughs> um, couple of sub wins, couple of KOs, couple of decisions. So you can't say he's a specialist, yeah. um, which you could argue John is. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Twenty one wins, nineteen by knockout, and two submissions. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. likes to knock people out. The thing is, though, John's not slouching the ground either. You know, no, he can grapple, yeah, you know, he can grapple, yeah, um, and he's over with SPG now. And, yeah. You know, they, they got top level guys over there as well. So I'm, yeah. I'm not telling this. I'm looking forward to that because obviously we there's uh, Jack Marshall on the card as well. So by the look at the minute, John's opening the night, and then Jack Marshall straight after him. Yeah. That'd be a good way to start the night. To be yeah. fair, both be, a couple uh, of bangers. Yeah, both exciting fights, hopefully, and. Uh, yeah, John Mark Goldberg is on the card as well, which is a friend of mine from just over oh, the bridge. As well, yeah. Heavyweight. Uh, Danny Roberts, they got as the main event, but I know that's probably going to change to uh, Gunny. Gary and Dan Taylor, is it? That's what they're talking about. Darren Taylor, this is kind of else. Yeah, they're yeah. talking about that, because obviously Bisping doesn't look like it's happening now, does it? Yeah, I want to see um, Gary Nelson fight after the fight in Scotland, because everybody was anticipating the big win from Nelson, mm. uh, and it didn't quite go. Yeah. Till's probably a harder yeah. opponent. Yeah, I don't doubt it for me. It's, it's always interesting to see a guy who's meant to win come back from a loss. Because mm. yeah. they always, like, there's two ways it goes. Either it knocks yeah. them or they come back absolutely yeah. scary. I think Gunny is the guy who's yeah. going to be absolutely scary. Uh, you know? Yes, yeah. yeah. about Darren Till. Against, against Darren Till. It's a different it was level altogether, you know. Most, it's hell of a fight, yeah. That's hell of a fight. I would love to see Till versus John Phillips, and I keep saying it. But you got two guys that are just going to meet in the centre of the cage. Just yeah. th- two southpaws with different skills. Yeah. Um, obviously, Till's really good with his elbows. That's the only thing that John's probably not used to. But, what a fight yeah, that would yeah. be. Oh, and that's, yeah. a, that's a name maker for Phillips, isn't it? I mean, that's like, yeah. right, you and I am. Because <laughs> I, mean, yeah, yeah. I know he's a welterweight, but he's talking about he's not going to be a long Till. He's huge, isn't he? Yeah, he's a big guy. So, yeah. oh, I'd have to see that. And I know it's completely off. Nelson's camp's awesome as well. You see all the videos on YouTube of his camp, like in the. Yeah. In the oh, no, he'd have to go there. Amazing. I think it's in Jimmy Manu is on the card as well. So, ah, that's cool. Who's he got? Some big bangers on that. John man. Black. He's going to some, oh, some knockouts. Yeah. I'll be going to the bar after that, mate. Yeah. Paul Craig's on there. It's a good card. He's only nine foot. Paul Craig, the, um, Scottish guy, yeah. They're complaining about the card. Some people are saying, oh, London card isn't very good. Obviously, they don't know the British people we know. Yeah. It's a good That's card. Yeah. yeah, I think they, they need to just spice up the top of the card and actually say Till and, till and Gunny's on. Yeah. Or they bring... bring um, Bisping in for his retirement. Yeah. Against... Yeah. Um, yeah. What's his name? Uh, German uh, Brazilian <sighs> mind blank knocked him out and come off steroids and now he's much smaller it's gone he'll come back but yeah <laughs> they were talking about that fight as well um, yeah. both of them retiring yeah. in London so but it, they're not showing it so yeah. you know but it's plenty of time to match his empty, I suppose. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. I think uh, tickets are only being released within the next couple of days. I yeah. think, as yeah. if they are not ready to release the yeah. next couple of days. So I know it's about now. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, UFC is going to be cool. Obviously, Jack Marshall's had a big fight, as we talked about last week. Isn't yeah, it? Jack's on the, say, March 24th. He's on the London Cage Oilers card fight in Bourne Lee. Yeah. You're on the Jack Shaw, are you? Jack Shaw, yeah. Yeah, oh, sorry, didn't we go on to that? Yeah, sorry. Are <laughs> we finished with UFC <laughs> now, no? Too many jacks, yeah, yeah. We're, we're drawing, there are too many jacks. We're drawing in the right. UFC now. We're going to Cage Warriors. And yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, he's fighting Vaughn Lee, who's obviously a former UFC veteran. Um, nice there, but maybe, oh, as I say, it's the first fight of Bantamweight, which is always, obviously interesting. Yes, yeah, definitely. Because uh, I think that's the most interesting part about the fight for me is Jack taking the drop to Bantamweight, which I think people knew was going to happen from yeah. the start, really. Yeah. I think he made featherweight in an amateur, didn't we? So, yeah. um, What's Jack's Charles record now at the moment? Seven and a I think. Seven yeah. Yeah. Did a big win in the um, Yeah, in yeah I don't know much about that guy. Yeah. I think his best win was the, the, the French guy so far. Another, um, 
The way he keeps beating all the boys in Swansea, uh, yeah, Mali, uh, uh, Common there, yeah, Commander, that's, that's probably his, to me, the most impressive. He's, he's lost uh, James Lilly on the last Bulldog card. Yeah. Uh, French yeah. He beat Mali as well. Yeah. But I think, I think that's, for me, is his best win so far, you know, the way he looked. I mean, obviously, the last guy he fought in Newport was a, quite a late step in and a completely different style of opponent. Yeah. Whereas he was fighting, I think, a, stri- a striker before. And it changed to a wrestler, sort of grappler, yeah, judo yeah. player. Um, so obviously you, you're a different game man, but he did knock him out with a knee, didn't he? <laughs> I, just, I just find him impressive every time I, mm. I watch him. Yeah. It's just something different. Do you know what I mean? It's, uh, mm. it's, uh, you can't put your finger on what, yeah. what it is that he's great at. Yeah. You, you could check a net over his skills and they're, they're all great do you know what I mean it's yeah I think we, we, as well, we've got we got prep, to see his boxing a bit now which is nice yeah yeah. Um, yeah because before we were seeing him take people down and dominate them at top his, his confidence is is yeah. and no level do you know what I mean it's uh, but it, it, look, what I do like is even though he's confident there's no cockiness about him there's no yeah, no, nice uh, yeah, yeah well. there's no no negative side of that no. do you know what I mean no. he's, he's, he's nice lad because yeah. he knows he can do it yeah. do you know what I mean yeah um, yeah, I mean, I'm interested to see if he beats Vaughn, which I think he's going to, because yeah. um, of the way the careers are going. Will they give him a shot at the champion at Bantamweight? Because that's what he's looking for, isn't he? Yeah. Against uh, Josh Reed's former opponent in Nathan's. I mean, yeah. that's Brad Pickett's guy. Yeah, um, um, uh, he called him out, didn't he? Uh, Jack in Belgium, I think. It was after that. Um, it was after he beat Jack's team right on the on the last one where he beat Reed. Yeah, but then in Belgium, Jack said, I'm dropping a bat in a week. Yeah, it's, uh, um, yeah. but obviously they, they're going to tell him, he, in my opinion, K. Joyce will say, you never fought a bat in a week, you can't fight yeah. for the title. Make bat in a week, i.e. Vaughnley, win, then yeah. we look at it. Yeah. Which he, makes he, sense. He's a big win, he's a big win now, right? he, Yeah. 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 He's a, Brad Pickett's no joke, he's a UFC, ex-UFC fighter. If he's putting um, him in, yeah, it's a good... You know, that's a high-level, profile fight. Yeah, yeah, Vaughn. Yeah. Vaughn was actually um, I matched Vaughn on my first ever MMA show before he went to UFC and against Dino. Yeah, but um, he, he got injured and changed. Well, speaking of Brad Pickett, Dino's actually fought Brad Pickett. Yeah, yeah that happened yeah. in the Troxy in London years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so small. Uh, yeah, small world getting yeah. smaller. <laughs> so, uh, what about K. Joyers Wales? They've got more of the cards that are sorted now. Yeah. So they got Brian Boulan from Belgium fighting Josh Reed. Yeah. Don't know much about the Belgium guy, do you? Um, I think um, Phil Raybun said last week he's fighting. Yeah. Over in, he's over in SPG doing a bit. Doing ah, there we are. Uh, don't know too much about that. They've added Lou Long into the card now against Ross Houston. Now, Ross is the guy that beat Khalid, his teammate, in the last out, if you remember, to yeah. see that fight. So that's an interesting one because obviously Lou seeks redemption on that. Yeah. Very interesting fight. Yeah, I can't wait to see Lou fight again as well. Yeah, yeah. I was see how he bounces back. Again, yeah, again, like I said, you know, after a shock defeat, yeah. coming back, do you know what I mean? And I think he's hungry for it as well, you know? Yeah. Mm. So it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah, Fran goes on the card with Sir Williams. Uh, I'm fighting a Belgian guy. That's cool. They're looking to match Khalid as well, which is interesting. Uh. Cool. Um, so what else is going on? Oh, Ashley Williams is fighting on EBI as well. That's coming up. Not MMA, uh, submission only. Yeah. Um, but obviously, you have done work with Ash before yeah, now. Yeah. So um, I got the best to him on that as well. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. yeah. It'd be good to see him back on it, uh, you know, because I think the last time, um, when was that now? That was a fair while ago. He was yeah. one of the last, you know, and he, he's got the experience now. He's, uh, mm. yeah. you know, hungry. He grows in confidence all the time, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's going to be good to see. Yeah, he's got uh, another big fight in the pipeline as well. I won't really mention I'm not sure if it's been announced yet, but uh, he's got mm. another big grappling event coming up as well, which mm. is going to be exciting. Uh, it's nice to see these grappling events coming around. As I say, I've tried. It's, it's it, will be, it will be me. I put it on now, but yeah. it's nice to see uh, that people are buying the tickets and going to watch. And... Um, Companies are making it more entertaining by the different rule sets and stuff like that. I heard one on the weekend, they done three five in a rounds. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Which, yeah. which makes yeah. pretty sense, doesn't it? Because yeah. you get a little break and then you start the pace again, you know what I mean? Rather yeah. than like, oh, I was stuck on the bottom of 10 minutes. Do you know what I mean? They are trying to make the room sense more exciting. Obviously, like certain mm. events will do like uh, 15 minutes where the first... Um, five minutes you'll get like points for submission attempts and yeah, like that. Some and only the, the end the, like the rules are actively encouraging more active things yeah. so with EBI they've got certain fights which are open palm strikes as well yeah. Yeah. so uh, it, it just changes it's combat to just it's, like that, yeah. it's like with the three fights though if you think about it you could be down one round yeah, I, I think they do it differently it's to that. It's usually yeah. minutes, but it's split down into three rounds. But you don't know where you are in that round, you know, because obviously you could be eight minutes in and you could have lost the first five. So it's like three rounds, but it's continuous. So there's no break. Isn't there? I thought no. they'd someone no, done one no. with breaks. The, the one I looked at, it was straight. When was that? Um, I look into it, but... Uh, Ah, uh, you had someone down on my rounds, which I thought was quite interesting. Yeah, there's, there's loads of people playing around with it at the moment, but um, EBI is obviously 10 minutes, and then it goes to all the time when yeah. you start in the, you mm. know, one or two positions and stuff, but uh, Ash is more ready for it now. He's, he's, he's been around a long time, yeah. you know. Mm. And it's good to see as well. It's on UFC Fight Pass as well, so it just tells you how big. Yeah, the exposure is huge, I'm, yeah. Nogi, um, yeah. Nogi several years at the moment, so... Um, there's a couple of local guys fighting on uh, Buddha 28 in Swansea. Uh, Liam Ben has just been announced, um, and a few others, but uh, we'll cover that again. Um, James Lilly's fighting Ben Echo Boxing. I don't know if you know of this. No, he, he, he fought signs. He, uh, yeah, he fought two weeks He fought two weeks ago. He did, yeah, but he's just been announced another fight. Yeah, so I spoke to him <laughs> via message. Um, yeah, he signed a four fight contract, basically, I think. Yeah. So uh, he's, he's got four fights. But it doesn't mean we're not going to see him do anything else. He said as long as he's within four, yeah. f- the four week greatest period of his, his, his match, then he can do MMA or whatever else. Right. But I think he's quite happy with because I think with James, he done enough of boxing. So I know quite well. Trained in my gym a bit, didn't he? Yeah, he's, he, to say he's pissed he, off at boxing. Yeah, because uh, yeah, because <laughs> you know the politics behind it. He wants to fight. <laughs> he wants yeah, to fight. Wants uh, so he's doing the MMA, and I was like, you know. It's, the level you're going on it's quite hard because obviously he's a good boxer yeah. um, and I think with the bare knuckle thing he did find his feet in that I can fight four times a year at least yeah, right? yeah. obviously the problem is it's quite easy to break your hand yeah. you know I, mean? <laughs> I think he did get a little bit injured but he said he's fine um, but yeah it's the 24th of March same day as Jack Shaw's fight same day as my bloody man of park fight show yeah. always happens isn't it so yeah. Yes, <laughs> you always end up missing yeah, something. Yeah, he showed good stand up against Common there on the last Google yeah. show as well. Um, oh, I mean, he's a good boxer. He, he's yeah. a, he's, really he's good a good there. boxer. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think with the with, when you take the gloves off, you drop the free two minute rounds. You have got to be a different type of fight than Robin. Yeah. You can't be right. Okay, I'm going to stand here, take, take a couple on the top of the head for ten rounds. A six rounds, six threes. The six threes, the three twos are completely different fight night, yeah. which is what he was boxing, six threes. Yeah. Um, you can't afford to take punches or yeah. no, no knuckles. You've got to get the hands high and uh, yeah. attack, attack, attack. Yeah. It's exciting to see that he stepped out of a comfort zone because like, no one around him is really doing that sort of thing. So, um, no. Well, not that I know of anyway. So it's good that he's, um, yeah. he's been open to that. It's not really been around him, is it? No, nah, no, nah, it's good that he's seen the niche and uh, he, you know, he's gone yeah. for it. And, yeah. uh, it's, it's quite an interesting Yeah, it is interesting. Yeah. Really interesting. Yeah. 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 Especially for him, you know, he's, he's, uh, <laughs> he's been around a long time. Yeah. And he's got the skills, do you know what I mean? And yeah. it's, it'll be good to see him yeah. tested in a, a slightly different way, but yeah. in, a, in a good way. I think he'll enjoy it. I think he'll really enjoy it. Maybe he got frustrated with MMA with the takedowns and stuff. He likes to stand and bang, and that's where he's gone now. Yeah. I, I, I think, I think to be honest, from reading between the lines, from, from speaking to him through going to the bare knuckle, I think the bare knuckle fight came first. <laughs> he done it, loved it. They offered him more fights. Great. Yeah. I, I don't think it was anything... I go. I'd rather do that. It was just, just like it's worked for him, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah. he's. I think it, if you offered him an MMA fight that wasn't four weeks in front of yeah one of his fights, he take, take it. it. Yeah. Um, I but as I say, if you've got four fights a year, that's what sixteen weeks wrote off. <laughs> but he can't fight. Yeah. And then a promoter offered him a fight a couple of weeks after the Benek fight. So it is going to be hard to fit the MMA yeah. fights in. But you'll find a way. <laughs> yeah, he's a scarber. He's mm. quite dirty. He won't, uh, he won't take much. No, no. Um, so, yeah. Um, Cadet Manor event is obviously after 10 day. Yeah. Any more news on that? No, starting to touch on it now. 
Um, Manor Park, not Captain Manor. No, oh, yeah, Manor Park. Uh, not black, black. In Swansea. Yeah. Manor Park. <laughs> Manor Park, yeah. So basically, it's a. Brett said last week he couldn't wait for it so he could travel. He doesn't know it's in Swansea. <laughs> <laughs> I only realised that when I watched it. Brett got, I love travelling on these shows. I love travelling. It's the closest show. To your house to, ever. To your house. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, no, it's it's going to be good. I mean, I'm um, looking, starting to match things up now. Starting to look a bit of fun. Um, I'm, it's not going to be like a normal show where you could have sixteen, eighteen fights. I think we're going to cap it at twelve because you're going to walk in, have your dinner, black tie event. Brett will, oh. Brett will be there walking <laughs> around giving it the big one the beginning maybe or a couple of people everyone's going to be suited up trapped in the reception blah 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 taken to the table with dinner you don't want to have dinner then watch 16 fights do you? No. you want to be like okay let's watch your know, 10 or whatever and then go on the piss do you know what I mean yeah. but um, yes it's going to be different in that way because uh, it's a little bit later than like, the 10 week card all the Swansea guys are buzzing to sort of get on it so then you can be a little bit fussy then of who you have on it maybe will it um, will the card come together a little bit after Tempe's finished because you know then who will want to go on to again maybe possibly? yeah I mean I, I'm most of it should be done by Tempe right. but um, there are some fights on Tempe that could make fights on the Manor Park okay, you never know sure. so say, there's a couple of fights that say 70 kilos amateur you could have two and have blinders and stick them together. <laughs> it could yeah. happen, I mean. yeah. and it does happen, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, it's it's, it's got to be good. I mean, I say twelve fights. You're gonna look. I'm gonna try and get the best ones I can on it, you know. Yeah, and um, there's a couple of things that are gonna, gonna try and add to the event to make it a little bit different, as and what they are. I haven't decided yet. But um, I've had a couple of ideas thrown from some angle, so yeah, let's we'll see. Awesome, cool. There's something else to look forward to today. Mm. Um, so before we wrap it up, uh, anything mentioned? Are we all good? Oh, no, good. Anyone you want to shout out to, say thanks to? Ah, uh, to be fair... Um, I'd like to thank myself. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, there'd be, there'd be too many to thank for uh, everything with the, the gym. Um you know, Chris and Ash have done a lot, uh, a lot of support for me. Um, the family have, have taken all the, the goods, the bads, and the uglies of me yeah. getting this place ready. Um, and then everyone who's um, joined the gym and stuck by the gym over the years. You know, yeah, you know, too many people to name to be honest. But mm. you know, hopefully, uh, you know, I'm giving the giving back to them with the the coaching. <laughs> And the, the support I'm giving them, the same as what Chris and Ash have given to me, you know. So yeah. it's so, hard yeah. to do things, I guess, on your own. Yeah, well, I, I've got, I'm, you know, I have got guys who, mm. you know, do massive favours. Yeah. Like Lloyd Ayres, uh, Paul Rogers. Yeah. You know, they, they, without them, um, mm. you know, I would pretty much be here every yeah. minute. Um, so they're, they're helping me make things so much easier. Um, and to be fair, they, you know, they, without, any doubt if I ask them a favour they, they do a son of sorts for me you know so I, I do have to thank them um, but then I could I could thank everyone to do with the gym uh, as well you know mm. uh, for their little pieces that they do so cool yeah well any yeah, from you no yeah right I think we have our next place um, I need another coffee and I want to go and check out the venue for uh, the next yeah. venue as well and tell you he's going to have his tough then <laughs> <laughs> Uh, cool. So, um, which camera? Are you? Oh, just one. Anyway. Um, yeah. So, if you want to follow uh, MMA Wales, we are on Facebook, we are on Instagram, uh, the podcast is on YouTube um, and iTunes when I sort my act out, but I'll be very, very soon. Um, is there any way to follow the club? Or? Yeah, we're on uh, we're on Facebook. We've got an email. Um, if anyone wants to get in touch, we're CRA West Wales at gmail.com. Uh, we're on Facebook as CRA West Wales. Um, if you've got any juniors that want to start doing a bit of BJJ, um, CRA West Wales juniors. Um, so yeah, yeah, we're we're on Instagram um, and Twitter as well. 
CRA West Wales on all of them. Yeah, it's going to be pretty easy to find, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or just search me, Steve Tyree. Yeah, cool. Don't the ugly bald guy with Yeah, and don't message the MWA Wales page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you can't. You can, but we're just going to give you them details. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's, uh, it is a you know, friendly environment. Like if uh, kids all ages want to come down and train. Oh, we're we're, down. we're, we're a it's family. Scary. Yeah. You know, no. we talk about kids training all night. It's, well, that's what all the work's been yeah. done for us. So it's more yeah. inviting. Um, yeah. We were friendly before, but now we're we look <laughs> we look um, inviting, which yeah. people come in and they're pleasantly surprised because yeah. there's a lot of stigma that goes with. The type of gym we are, yeah. especially in Pembrokeshire, there's a lot of um, I don't know. It's, it's not narrow mindedness, but lack of knowledge. Yeah. So mm-hmm. just come and give us a come and have a look, and hopefully we'll uh, be able to help you out. Good. So. Cheers, Harvey. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Stu. Yeah. No Good. Right, guys. Uh, look forward to the next episode. I'll see you again. <laughs>